Hi, Jack Rabbit here. So we have a look at some um, breadboard diodes. Let's get into it. So let's have a look at our first diode. So it's this one. And uh, this is a um, IN4001 and it's a rectifier diode. What's called pretty much common to all diodes is that it passes the current only in one direction. And um, this is the negative side and that is the positive side. And you can see that from the marking that it has here. It's like a band which shows the direction towards, towards um, negative. And um, uh, all diodes also have these properties of that uh, when you have the voltage in reverse then they can only handle a, a um, specific amount of that voltage without breaking down. So this has 50 volts. And also the current passing through a diode is um, also specified. So the maximum current you can put through. So this has um, 1 amp. And, um, you know, like most electronic circuits, when the current passes through them, then you get losses, uh, which means that you get a voltage loss when, you're, um, when the current is flowing. And um, you have a specific voltage over the diode, um, which always exists when there's current flowing in the um, open direction. And in this case, it's 1.1 uh, volts. Now, this diode also... Um, it's considered rather slow, so diodes have a have a categorization also based on their um, performance. So this could be considered slow, and um, basically, as the name says, rectifier diode. It's mainly for rectifying um, sinus wave form AC voltages to DC voltage, and kind of <laughs> you know, abstract definition, low frequencies, so under one megahertz. <laughs> They also tend to be delivered in these kind of uh, webs, so you have several diodes um, um, available in this kind of threaded, and then you can cut out individual diodes as you need them. So the next category of diode is um, what they call um, uh, switching uh, diode. This is an IN4148 or IN914, it depends on. It's, it's equivalent electrically. And um, this can handle a reverse voltage of uh, 100 volts uh, max. It can only do 200 milliamps of um, current. And it has a voltage drop of 1 volt. And um, the um, uh, reversed um, blocking time is 8 nanoseconds. And um, this is my, these kind of um, diodes are used mainly in um, uh, fast rectification of free waveform AC voltages to DC. And um, this is considered more like high frequency um, uh, switching, like uh, 60 megahertz or less. So the next category of um, diode is the so-called fast recovery diode, and um, this example is an FR107. It's got a very high um, reverse voltage withstand, so that's uh, 1000 volts. Uh, it can handle 1 amp of current, uh, 1.3 uh, volts of um, voltage loss. And um, the uh, reverse time is 500 nanoseconds, so I should be quite um, fast. Uh, mainly used in fast rectification of um, also free waveform AC voltage to DC. A um, little bit lower frequencies, less than one megahertz. And I mean the the why they say it's fast recovery is that it, it, it um, actually can do the fast recovery in, uh, in when you're swinging high voltages. So maybe not the absolute speed is not the fastest, but the um, its capability of recovering uh, from a mode switch from open to close is, is um, better than what other diodes have. So the last category of a diode is a, a Schottky diode, 
Uh, I can handle reverse voltage up to around 20 volts, 1 amp, nominal current. Uh, but it has a much less of a uh, voltage loss in the um, open direction. So that's um, under 1 volt, actually 0 0.75. And these are very commonly used for um, transient protection and fast rectification on high frequencies. They uh, have to be a bit faster so they can actually handle the case when you have very steep um, waveforms, which transients are by nature. So, well, let's have a look at the diode in operation. So, here we have a potentiometer. 10 kilo and then a 470 ohm resistor and then the actual diode and as you see now it's not um, letting any current through because the voltage over the, the diode is too small so it's not open yet but if we decrease the um, resistance and the voltage goes up over the diode until it hits the level where it's going to start operating here you start to see where it starts to operate just a little bit and a little bit and now it's completely open. So you see there's a little bit of a voltage range where it's you know starting to open but it's not really open. And so this this diode, this particular diode is uh, completely open at around um, 0.7 volts and that's pretty typical to most the, the figures they give in the spec sheets for the, uh, the four voltage drop is in um, maximum circumstances. So you, usually you you get some voltage that's under that, and you can it can even vary between even if you have um, like ten you know IN four thousand one um, diodes, then you might actually get a small variation between the four voltage that you actually experience if you did an experiment. Okay, now we see what happens when we feed. AC comes in, goes through the diode, and we have a resistor as a load. And the top is the incoming waveform, and the bottom is the outgoing waveform. As we see, it chops off the bottom part. And if we um, move the output up, and we can see that it's a perfect fit. So, except for the little bit of a voltage drop that is created by the, um, the um, diode itself. So you lose a bit of, bit of voltage. And of course this is um, This behavior is independent of the waveform, so it'll just, anything that's negative voltage it will just cut away. So let's hit the um, diode with um, one megahertz, which you know, I was talking about them that this diode can't really handle, and, and, and here we actually see what happens then because it, the signal is so fast coming down slope that it actually gets to sneak through the negative voltage quite a bit before the diode actually says, oh no, I need to close. And then it's trying desperately to close before the next phase starts. You can actually move it up. And then we see how it distorts the waveform. So maybe about there. And one can see actually that it's not really doing its job. <laughs> and um, if we were to move to a to, um, square wave, and you see you get this very odd, also this odd problem where ah, it basically not doing that much. It's, it's nearly passing the whole signal through. So that's why you need to actually use signal di diodes if you want to go up to um, higher frequencies. So I hope you found this informative. Um, please consider subscribing. Uh, hit the like button. Uh, merch is available, or if you'd just like to buy me some coffee, um, the links are in the comments. And um, see you in the next one.